Hey there, this is going to be a quick video on using the text widget. I'm going to share some tips and tricks on using the text widget. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmit. Without any delay, let's get started. So right here, um, I'm on the canvas and the first thing I need to do is go bring in a text widget. So I'm just going to bring in a text widget and place it on the canvas. Let's move this up a bit, all right? So there we have a nice text widget on the canvas. And to the side, we have a couple of properties for the text widget being displayed. And these are properties on uh, display, on styling and visibility. Everything is right here. Uh, I'm going to leave this to you to go check them out. But the first thing I want to do here is to bump up the text size of the text widget to 24 pixels so that we are able to see everything we need to do. The first property I'll be showing you here is the text value. And this is where you actually go update the value that is displayed on the text widget. So we can display something like hello world and uh, typing that in actually displays hello world into the text widget. But the truth is that in real life applications, you actually would not want to have a static text being displayed at all times in text widgets. You want this data to come from maybe an API call, a DB query, or even other widgets to be dynamically bound to the text widget. And I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. So um, taking a look at what I have here, I have a user's query. It's a Postgres query that returns a table of users from the database. And we have uh, 10 users because we set a limit of 10 being returned right now. So let's go display this in a table widget. Actually, we can actually display that by clicking on the table icon here. And we have the data bound to the table widget and the table widget is shown on the canvas. So let's bring this up a bit. And uh, I'm going to bring up the name property here so that we're able to see the name um, on the table. All right, so here we have a table showing the list of 10 users. So for instance, let's say I want to display the name of the user selected from the table. It's actually possible to do that on the text widget. So um, in order to pull in data from other entities, which could be API calls, other widgets, DB queries, um, even reading data from the Apps Store, you need to write a binding. Yeah, it's called a binding. You need to write a binding. And how you do that is by um, typing the curly brackets to access the state of whatever widgets you want to do. So you have to type in the curly brackets two times or curly braces two times. And here you're able to access the state of whatever widget or whatever entity on absence you need to access. In this case, we want to access the name of the user selected on the table. And this widget, the table widget has a name of table one. So this is going to be a table one dot selected row which is the row selected and we want to access the name property of the row selected so this is going to be dot name and right here you can see the name selected shown up on the text widget so we're going to select um, a new name from the table widget actually displays that name on the text widget so this is how easy it is to configure dynamic bindings on the text widget I'd like to also show you some other configuration for the text widget because many of these properties you have on the text widget can actually let you write JavaScript to manipulate their state. For example, you have the visible property. Um, virtually all of these properties that have a JS button actually lets you manipulate the state using JavaScript. So uh, the visible property is just one of them. Uh, so let's say you want to control the visibility of the text widget based on the state of other widgets or other entities on AppSmith. Um, for you to do that, you still need to write some binding. So I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. Um, we would want to control the visibility of the text widget based on the state of the switch widget right here. So let's say uh, display text. So let's say display text. And uh, we want to display text based on the visibility of the switch widget here. So what we need to do is click on the JS button and here, we're able to write some bindings. So let's write some bindings. I'm going to do the double curly braces. And uh, here I have the autocomplete giving suggestion. So I'm going to select switch one dot is switched on. And you can see that this evaluates to true. And as a result, we have the text widget visible. So if I go to turn this off, you can see that the text widget is not visible. And you can imagine when you have the app deployed, you won't have the text widget showing up. Uh, let's actually deploy this so that I can show you how this um, works in a deployed version. So you have the display text turned on and uh, 
you have the text widget visible. So turning this off actually turns off the text widget. So that's how easy it is for you to configure other properties of the text widget based on the state of other entities on AppSmith. So please go through the other properties of the text widget, especially the styling, because you have lots of styling options available in the text widget, and uh, that will be all for this video. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll be sure to take your questions. All right, that's all for today's video. Test you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.